Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by KB Lawn Care. As fall approaches, it's a great time to schedule an aeration and an overseeding service to take care of your lawn, make it look great in the spring. Uh, you can do that now as we head into fall. And while you're prepping your yard for next spring, KB Lawn Care can also help you with your fall cleanup. That's limbs, leaves, you name it, they do it all. KB Lawn Care, I use them at my home. They do a great job. KBLawnCare.net to learn more about them and their services. We thank them for being part of the sports source. All right, uh, we talked about this very quickly last week, but I wanted to bring it up while we talk recruiting here. The NCAA is going to allow everyone to have an extra year of eligibility and an extra year to use it. Okay, that sounds great for the NCAA, what do they care? <laughs> but it falls to the schools. You know, that's, that's where you, you get into issues. When they did this with spring sport, sport athletes, University of Wisconsin, uh, Barry Alvarez, the former football coach up there, said, we can't afford to bring all these guys back, sorry. You had Philip Fulmer down here say, you get to come back. Well, I wonder how much that has changed because now you know what the stadium is going to look like, you think. He's already, Philip Fulmer's already said we're going to lose 30 to 40 million minimum. Are they now looking at it saying, I don't know that we can afford to bring all these fall sports people back. So it could be different uh, spring to fall. It could be different school to school. That said, I'll start with you, Ryan. Uh, in, from a recruiting aspect, a lot of these kids sign to the place because they want immediate playing time. What happens? Are these kids going to be wise enough to say, oh, wait, these seniors could come back, so I'm going to go here instead? Or... Is it just, you think they're just going to sign? I, I think for the most part they're just going to sign, but part of that is just it's kind of gotten lost. I don't think it's been discussed a whole lot because in all the craziness of this year, this is about the seventh or eighth most important story affecting their recruitment. They're more worried about taking visits and things like that. But I think you might see other schools start to bring this up. Now, it's something that's impacting everybody, but if there's a particular situation where a, a school's trying to flip a kid or, or a head-to-head -head battle mentions, um, hey, this school's not going to have a chance for you to play early. We, we are. That's where you're going to see it come up. So I think down the road, it definitely could impact some things, but it almost impacts everybody so much that it's hard to say it's going to be uh, a major factor. It's just something kids may have to deal with, and it's just a reality. You're going to have six, you know, potentially six classes of kids instead of the usual five when you talk about fifth-year seniors down. You're just going to have six classes, and that's just how it is uh, until further notice. Has Tennessee backed itself into a corner by saying they're going to let the spring guys back? Because now it would be very difficult to say you're not going to bring the fall guys back, or f fall men and women, those athletes back. I still wonder about the title line thing. I'm not a big title line guy, but it's the law of the land. Is that going to impact how many football players you can bring back because you can only bring back matching female athletes? Or do we somehow just ignore federal law for a year? That's interesting to me, but Josh and Jimmy, do you think – Tennessee is going to wind up saying, yeah, if Jerry Garantano wants to come back, he gets a sixth year. I think they are going to say that. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure how they get around it. And, and can they get a one-year waiver on Title IX? That's another thing that comes up. Uh, to the point about some of these kids, I think it might affect skilled position players more than others because what do we see? We see more quarterbacks, it seems like, transferring than anything else. But I, I think Tennessee is going to say, Garantano, you want to come back? Brandon Kennedy, yeah, if you want to come years. back. <laughs> yeah, seven-year center. Yeah, there you go. But I, I do think Tennessee is going to say, yes, we will take you back. I don't know how many are going to say, yes, I want to come back. But right. I do think Tennessee is going to open the door for them to return. That's yes. another big expense. Now, they, mm -hmm. they mark it as though a scholarship costs X. It's what, your, it's what an out-of-state student would, would pay. Right. That's inflated a little bit in terms of the actual athletes. So there's a little monkeying around, but still that's money in a year when you're losing millions upon millions that you're gonna have to pay to keep some other kid on campus again. Yeah, I mean, if you're in a position where you're having to cut costs and they're in a position where they have to cut costs, that's a, a pretty easy one to do to where you can add this number up and deduct it. Uh, I would think that it's a mix. Uh, it, it, the better the player you are, the better chance you have of being able to come back with another year of eligibility. They already have ways of, if there isn't necessarily going to be a spot for you, right. they can move that spot along. So I would think that uh, as, as great as that doesn't sound, uh, that'll be there. I mean, that's just the reality. And, and sometimes kids are going to get it. There'll be guys that don't, they don't want to come back. They're ready to move on. Mm -hmm. yeah, if, they're, if they're not playing as a fifth-year senior and they don't think they're going to play as a sixth-year senior, they're probably ready to go do something else. I always get angry emails from people saying Tennessee wouldn't do that. Tennessee doesn't run off players. But, and it's like that happens everywhere. 
I'll, I'll say this, that you, you have to be willing to compete and everything's an arms race in the SEC. So if, there's, if it's a program where football is important and the coach wants players to stick around, you're going to find the money to make it happen. To me, I wonder if the SEC will step in at some point and say, okay, to keep this from getting out of hand, to keep costs under control, we're going to have a blanket policy. But anything short of that, to me, a program like Tennessee, they're going to take back everybody that will come back. Yeah, and is the SEC at any point going to hand out loans to their members? And I've heard that talked about. Um, it's an interesting situation. It can be chaotic. Uh, hmm? Chaotic. <laughs> yeah. Yes, chaotic is yeah. the, the proper word. I mean, and I understand why the NCAA did it. Everyone looked at this and said, that's the right thing to do. Yes, and for the NCAA, it's just <laughs> a rubber stamp. There you go. Because they're not impacted by it. It's the schools mm -hmm. that are, they just said, and here's the bill for you to bring all those guys <laughs> back. That's going to be interesting, especially the smaller school, the smaller the school you're dealing with, the rougher this becomes. Yeah. All right, uh, when we come back, Tennessee ranked in the first AP Top 25 poll of the year. But will they be ranked in the last AP Top 25 poll of the year? That's our question. Come on back on the Sports Source.